Rich Habib, um, I know we call him Habib. By the way, Mike, I finally found out what Habib's name is in Arabic. So Habib Nurgamenov in, in Arabic, his name is Habib, which means beloved. It's actually an Arabic word. So I've always been confused because it had a K in the beginning. So I was always like, but in Arabic. So anyway, his name is Habib, apparently. And that's how this pronounced. So I was listening to an interview with Habib and Mike Tyson recently, which was, by the way, phenomenal. Um, and Habib was talking about a fight he had, I think, with it uh, doesn't matter who it is, but I think it's with Conor McGregor, in which he said he came uh, to fight and he was really excited about the fight. And he was really dismayed that Conor tapped out in front of his fans. He said, all these people came from Ireland to watch you. I didn't have a leg lock or an arm or arm lock on you or something like that. It was your neck. You could have at least went to sleep. You shouldn't have tapped. What do you think of that, Rich, this idea of going to sleep instead of tapping? I mean, then it's like, well, if you have the arm, why not just let the arm snap, right? When you're caught, you're caught. It's kind of like... <laughs> but the arm you can't recover from, I thought, right? So the neck, is the neck like, it's no problem? Or What does it matter? What does it matter? Like, let's say, let's say you and I are grappling, all right? And, the, and, and let's just say that I'm a better grappler than you. And, uh, and then you catch me in some, whatever, some sort of, whatever, a submission. Yeah. And because I'm a black belt and my grappling partner is not a black belt, I'm going to get... Uh, <clears throat> let my pride get in the way <clears throat> and I decide not to tap. And you see this all the time and maybe I get hurt. Maybe I actually escape. Oftentimes when I'm grappling with somebody, like if, if I'm grappling with somebody and I get caught into something, like I'll tap and just, because in my mind, I'm like, I shouldn't have been in this position to begin with. Right. Yeah. Like the, 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 it's not the tap it, the, where the failure yeah. came. It's, yeah, the fact that, it's the fact that I let my opponent get me there. Now being in that situation and when, uh, when the stakes are on the line is a, is a much different story, but when, when the outcome is inevitable, right? Like yeah. he's not escaping now, me, me going to sleep, me choosing not to tap and going to sleep instead might be the belief that if I don't tap, I got another second or two, maybe something can happen. Is there an element of honor there? Because if, if you go to sleep, you don't really injure yourself. I think that much, right? If you break your arm, that's ridiculous for honor. I mean, you're just, you know, but I've also heard the Gracies used to not tap initially in Brazil when they used to take all their, um, like they wouldn't tap against that Japanese guy who, who beat, uh, beat, uh, Hicks and Gracie, I think. Have you ever heard of that, Mike? Is it Sakuraba? Is that who yes. Was it? Yeah. The Henzo. Yeah. Yeah. When Henzo the guy who invented, Sakurabi let his arm snap. Exactly. Uh, I'm just uh, no. I'm, I'm live the fight another day, man. When you when exactly. you uh, when you've lost, you've lost, and you you know that's for now. Me, now, Richard, a, at the start of your fight. career, you had almost no. I mean, you had no losses. I think until Lioto as a professional. Yeah. What did that first loss? And I know you're a very rational person. And I've come to understand how you think about decisions. But that first loss did it? Did it put a any kind of uh did it slow down your progress at all did it make any self-doubt at all or did you just analyze your mistakes and what was the mistake because i saw when i watched the full match just to try to understand what happened i don't know what i'm watching obviously but i i thought it just seemed like he was he was overly powerful like he would when he got on top of you grappling he was physically strong so it was difficult to get out of and then the leg kick at the end maybe that was the hit you in the head and i think hurt you right but the, the the mistake was uh, probably over overestimating myself and arrogance or something like that. We I didn't do the research on Lyoto that I needed to. I accepted that fight. There was a lot of other things. I mean, I flew to Japan. It was like all these things that affected my performance. Uh, you know, I wasn't like they they um we were why was in it in Japan by the way? Because isn't he Brazilian Japanese? Yeah, but he was uh, uh we fought in uh, Noki Bombay and he was Antonio Noki's protege. Oh, so. Um, um, the fight was in Japan on a New Year's Eve show, which is a big, big night of events in Japan. And like, I mean, th look, they did everything they could to possibly mess with me. Like I didn't have heat in my locker room. Uh, it was cold in, in, in Osaka. And that is a fun. low promoter move right there, right? There's a, there's a lot. There's a lot of stuff, man. They I didn't, bet. They I didn't bet. come in. They didn't like I didn't have the bout order. They didn't tell me what time I'd probably be up. I didn't have a proper warm up. And I'm not these are not excuses. Uh, because really the reason why I lost that match is because I didn't know who Leota was at the time. Uh, I think he only had maybe three or four fights mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and I overestimated my ability and underestimated him as an opponent. And that's why I lost that match. Um, and so I wasn't prepared when I came in, he was tighter on his movements. Like we both stepped in for a left cross. He's a Southpaw at the same time. And his was just quicker to deliver than mine was. And he caught me with that initial left cross, which was the beginning of the end. And, uh, and so, yeah, that's, that's, I just was, I was bested on that night. And so I, you, much like my Ted talk, like you can go back and you can look at these losses 
And you need to have the ability to what I have, what I call it in, in that TED talk was situational amnesia. You know, you have to be able to take and extract from a loss or from any sort of traumatic event in your life and, and you know, extract the useful information. Mm-hmm. Utilize that useful information, analyze that useful information, use that information to help you move forward. And you need to discard the rest of that and just have, have situational amnesia where you don't forget it, where you don't remember it. Otherwise, you will hold on to that stuff like emotional baggage that just weighs you down. And I've been able to do that in every single, you know, every single loss that I've had. Like, you know, even after, like, after I lost to Anderson, for example, I told the, the story of Jason. Mm-hmm. When I when I fought Jason, that when I stepped into the the ring that time, like I were even the first time that I sparred, like the first time I came back in the gym and sparred, I'd had my nose broken, and I remember the first time I got jabbed in the face, like I was like I was over slipping and moving way far out of the way and doing all these yeah. things just because you know it, it, it takes a second and maybe to, to to get back on the horse again. But me, I'm determined. I'm like, no, I'm, I'm going to get back on. Even though this horse threw me off, I'm going to get back on this horse. And so eventually, like, things tighten up and I'm doing what I need to do. And and uh, because I know that things are eventually going to move the direction that they need to move. So, like, I use that situational amnesia and I discard anything that's not useful to me. Oh, yeah. Let's make a note about that. So for people who haven't seen your TED Talk, search TED Talk, Rich Franklin. Watch it for everyone listening. It is beautiful. Honestly, it almost brought me to tears. To be honest with you, it was very, it was very beautiful, very inspirational, and very. it's very short. And really, I agree very much with the selective amnesia approach to life. 